third part some personal experiences with prayer it's a pity that the kriya schools do not give officially the teaching of devotional prayer japa perhaps the pride and arrogance of some kriyabins had contributed to spread the idea that japa is a too simple practice fit for simpletons those that understand nothing about prana spine chakras I have appreciated that the organization founded by PY leak out the information that great disciples of PY practice japa. Actually, you will never be able to find anything like japa to ameliorate your kriya. Japa acts on the subconscious mind. You cannot practice kriya by the sheer strength of your will alone. You have to relax. Here you will find a few examples of what relax means. I only japa One day I went in the open country not to practice my kriya routine but just to focus on pure japa. It was a near perfect day where I could enjoy the blue sky in which a small cluster of clouds floated in the golden light. The session was longer than I had planned. I was sustained by a calm euphoria. I decided to mentally repeat the prayer in the spine. I mentally chanted half prayer during the inhalation and half during the exhalation. I decided to meditate on the meaning of the chosen prayer, willingly affirming with each breath my surrender to the divine. I felt an urge to make a special effort to go ahead slowly, with intensity. I followed, while slowly moving my chin up and down, the movement of the prayer in the spine and remarked this, the passion that was warming my heart was intensified when I came down with the prayer and reached the chakra of the heart. Not only that, Very important became the process of spontaneous tendency to prolonging the exhalation. I remained with the chin almost touching the chest. I remained there immobile with eyes closed for some instants perceiving the annihilation of my mind. It was impossible to think a single thought. The state of mental silence appeared stronger than ever. My eyes were full of tears. Bliss, pure bliss. I returned many times in that place and tried to live the experience again. I increased the length of my practice. Summer came and I remember long sunsets with evenings that seemed to have no end. That moment of my life was really a magic one. I have an endless nostalgia for it. Living those long sessions sitting in the open countryside in total freedom and in a state of mystical intoxication was an unforgettable event the devotion that i experienced at that time was not the classical feeling that we define bhakti it was the sense of being crushed destroyed by something that in my diaries i called unbearable beauty at that time lost in my innocent exaltation i compared this state with the meditative experience that saint teresa of avila called infused recollection a glorious delirium a celestial folly a state of unspeakable delights it is an inebriation of love in which the soul doesn't know what to do whether to speak or to keep silent whether to cry or to laugh the soul is conscious of a deep satisfaction the soul feels invaded by something that has a taste of eternal life and feels as if coming into contact with an endless goodness Hence comes the feeling that there is nothing on the earth worthy of your desire or attention. S. Theris. One evening, a sound of tolling bells came from a distant village. It was like a cascade of light. It was so unexpected. A part of me went on repeating, there has never been granted so much joy to a human being. 2. Incremental routine micro three bhanga murari. Utilizing the prayer given by Lahiri Mahashya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, often an invincible drowsiness overpowered all my best efforts. On the inner screen of my awareness a lot of images were displayed like dreamlike visions. No help came from changing the position of the legs, practicing Maha Mudra several times, or interrupting the practice for a short pause. After some rest, I found out, however, that it did not solve my problem sleepiness came back as soon as i resumed the practice there was no way coffee a lot of rest to find some relief from it there was nothing to do but to accept the situation and become accustomed to practice while never coming out of a drowsy state the situation improved by practicing at the seaside amid people that did not disturb me but that i felt walking in the nearby 
When I perceived they were looking at me, I pretended I was reading a book that I always had opened upon my knees. The beatitude was awful. One day I was on a cliff not far from the beach. I had taken shelter from the sun under a tree. At dusk I leaned my back against a rock and practiced keeping my eyes open. The sky was an indestructible crystal of infinite transparency and the waves were continually changing their color. Behind the black lenses of my sunglasses my eyes were full of tears. I cannot describe what I felt except in poetic form. There is an Indian song in the final part of the movie Mahabharata whose lyrics are taken from the Sveta Svatara Upanishad I have met this great spirit as radiant as the sun transcending any material conception of obscurity only the one who knows him can transcend the limits of birth and death there is no other way to reach liberation but meeting this great spirit when i listen to the beautiful voice of the indian singer repeating there is no other way my heart knows that nothing has the power to keep me away from this state and this terrifically beautiful practice which i will enjoy for the rest of my life Many times I practiced in that way. The memory of the period in which I was absorbed in this practice comes back to mind surrounded by a dreamy aura. Sometimes, only in jest, I ask myself if this period actually existed. For more than 2 years I deviated from the common way of living. This was the deepest experience of my life. I practiced all day long, every day, if possible, out in the open. 3 12 repetitions of lahari's mantra in each center of the small heavenly orbit sometimes a simple experiment can reveal a fantastic opportunity for introspection when i was learning the utilization of the micro movement tribhanga murari i decided to repeat that mantra not 3 but 12 times in each chakra i decided also to test the theory given in some books of internal alchemy according to which there exist four more chakras in the frontal line on the surface of the body to make it simple i practiced 12 micro in these centers kutastha adam's apple central part of the breast bone navel pubic region perineum chakra 1 2 3 4 5 in the spine then medulla the experience went ahead in a particularly deep way I felt I had the power to touch internally the essence of each center. I had only to visualize the syllables of my mantra moving sweetly like the flow of a liquid substance inside each center. While nearing medulla, the muscles of my lower jaw gradually relaxed to the point that my mouth opened and I remained there with the mouth open, the chin slightly up, sweetly locked in that position for a very long time. An approximate calculation from my part revealed that i remained in that position for about half an hour i know that the experience was surely pleasant but i do not remember anything something very subtle indefinite happened inside medulla what happened in the medulla while going up what happened in me i don't know for japa while walking encouraged by the definitively established principle that prayer is the central part of the spiritual path This of course came from the teaching of S. Teresa of Avila. I decided to take part in a pilgrimage, praying unceasingly. The program was to walk a full night in order to reach a beautiful sanctuary the following morning. While I walked, I had the sweet intuition that my mates' lives were wrapped up in love. I moved around as if my heart bore a bracer within. The center of what I call me was not in the brain, but in my heart. and in my heart i perceived a sort of tension of tenderness the vision increased in power my mates could not by instinct avoid loving or taking care of somebody their own children for example each one of them had the power for great and incredible actions as a consequence no one had the certitude of being protected by painful experiences their life being merged in love was also merged in pain and tragedy This duality is involved in earthly existence interwoven with our being. The sentiment of this inescapable reality was experienced as a painful grip tearing my chest apart. While I was merged in these thoughts, the sun rose over our path and the sanctuary appeared over a hill. Something thawed in my depths 
and there came such an intensity of love that the same experience turned into a blissful pain.